Hi, this is Dr. Chris Burke at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And this is a short video series on a quick introduction to Java, the Java programming language. So in this series, we're going to go over everything from basic variables and how to get started, all the way up to classes and some simple exercises so that you can continue with the Java programming language on your own. In this first part, we'll be giving a brief overview and how to get started with Java. So again, this video series is a quick introduction to Java. Uh, we're going to assume prior knowledge of at least one high-level programming language. Uh, we're not going to give an introduction to computer science or an introduction to programming. We're giving an introduction to Java for those who know how to program already. Some basic setup is not included. Uh, this includes installing an IDE like Eclipse, which we'll be using, a compiler and things like that, uh, which we include in the course uh, separately. So just a really quick background here. Uh, Java was actually created in 1995. Uh, it was originally developed for app programming on cable box tops. It's still one of the five top programming languages out there. It's widely used, it's extensively developed, and, it's and it continues to be updated and supported. Uh, it was designed to be familiar, so we're going to see a lot of C-style syntax like we see in a lot of languages. It was also designed to be portable, meaning that you should be able to compile it, you should be able to write it once, compile it once, and run on any machine that has a Java Virtual Machine or JVM. Uh, that is, a, it's, a, it's a machine that's written on top of the operating system so that you can run Java applications on top of it. A Java code can run on any JVM. It's not like a traditional program that is compiled for that particular hardware for that particular operating system. Uh, the Java Virtual Machine abstracts all that away so that you can write it once compile it once and run it anywhere as long as you've got a JVM. Uh, some other key aspects to it are that there's no memory management. Uh, it, it automatically provides what's called a garbage collector. So once a variable or once some memory is no longer being used, it's no longer in scope, no longer has a reference to it, it's eligible for garbage collection and the Java virtual machine takes care of all those details for us. Java is a class-based object-oriented programming language. It's not a pure OOP language, but it does have classes and that's how it uh, achieves objects. Uh, the translation of that basically in practice is that everything in Java is either a class or belongs to a class. Uh, classes are simply just units of code that are declared in their own source file. So for example, if I've got a uh, class named Hello World uh, and all class uh, the naming convention for all classes is upper camel case, it must be in a source file with the same name, .java, and it'll produce a class file that's Java bytecode uh, that's with the same name as well, hello world.class. Now, when we use an IDE, that is an integrated development environment, like Eclipse, all of these details are hidden from us and we don't have to worry about it. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that now. Uh, here is Eclipse. Uh, it's a brand new uh, workspace. Uh, with a welcome message here. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. Uh, and you'll see that we have uh, a perspective here. This is our Java perspective. Right. Uh, there's no, there's currently no projects because I haven't created a project yet. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'll right click, create a new project. Uh, and there are lots of different projects that you can create, but I'm just going to create a simple Java project to start out with here. And I'll just call it Hello World. And there's my project. It automatically brings in the GRE, the system library, so that we've got all of the bells and whistles that come and ship with Java. It's got a SRC folder, which is a source folder. That's where we're gonna put all of our source files. I'll just go ahead and create a new class here. And like the demonstration, I'll go ahead and call it Hello World. Now I've got a class. Uh, and I could run this right now, but it's not runnable because there's no main entry point. Uh, remember, one of the key aspects of Java is that it has to be familiar. And like all programming languages, you have to have a starting point. The starting point for us is going to be our main method. So I'll just go ahead and create that now.
Okay, there's our first completed Hello World program. Again, a lot of this is gonna seem familiar already. Opening and closing curly brackets uh, in order to denote code blocks and, method, and methods. Uh, the main method is called main. It returns nothing, so we've got a void signature there. Uh, it also takes in command line arguments, args, uh, and it does some output, or system.out for output, dot print ln, and ln stands for line, we'll talk about that later. Uh, and it prints, simply prints out hello world as a message. Now, in the background, this is being compiled into Java bytecode. That Java bytecode is then runnable on a Java virtual machine, and it can actually produce some output. Uh, that's all opaque to us. We don't care about that because it's all taken care of by the IDE here. To actually run this program, I'm going to click the play button up here, and all the output is displayed in the console down here. Uh, so that's our first run of the program. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and update this a little bit. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change what's, what's called the package of this uh, program. And immediately we're going to see that it doesn't compile. Anytime you see a red line under this in Eclipse, that just means that there's a compilation problem or a, a project setup problem. So uh, it, it sometimes is helpful and gives you some ways to resolve those issues. I'm going to go ahead and move my source file, hello world.java, to a new package, unl.csc, and I'll explain what's going on here in a second. You see over here in the source file, it's now been changed. The hello world file is now in the unl.csc package. Right? Packages are Java's way of organizing code. Uh, all they are are a directory structure. So this file is actually located in a directory called CSE, which is a subdirectory in a directory called unl. So you can have directories and subdirectories, an entire directory hierarchy, and you can put, put uh, source files in any one of them and organize them so that you can put stuff that involves math in one file, stuff that involves input and output into another file, into another package, so that you can, or so that you can organize your code a little bit better. In the source file itself, you've got this package declaration. Uh, and of course, it needs to be, as far as, as far as Eclipse is concerned, it needs to be in the correct folder. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what this looks like on the system level. In other words, what if we took away the IDE? Uh, what is all actually going on under the hood here? All right, so I'm actually in my workspace now. You can see here's my project folder, hello world. I'll go ahead and go into that. Uh, you can see a bin folder and a source folder. That source folder is the same as over here. Let me go ahead and actually increase the size here. It's the same fo as the folder over here, but we don't see this bin folder. That's because that's where everything that gets compiled into Java byte code, it stands for binary, it's in there. So let me go ahead and list the contents of both of these. You see that they have the same underlying directory structure. Let's go ahead and look at what's in the source folders UNL directory. In that, we see a CSE directory. And in that, we see a hello world.java source file. Right. If we did the same thing for the bin directory, we see a dot class file. Right. I'm gonna go ahead and actually show you what that looks like first of all. So if I try to output this to the standard output, then it's uh, most of it's garbage, right? That's because it's Java bytecode. It's binary mo for the most part. Uh, you can look at the internals. You can even decompile Java source file or J Java class files. I can get more information about it using a, a utility here, Java P, and it tells me what the uh, methods are in it. Uh, I can decompile that further and actually get the the source code uh, to a point. Uh, but that's the, uh, the that's the Java bytecode, and it would actually be run on a uh, Java virtual machine. If I try to run this, well, it, it's it, it's it's not runnable. It's not an actual executable that's compiled for my computer for my system here. I would actually have to run this uh, on through the Java virtual machine. I'm actually going to show you how to do that right now. 
Actually, I'm going to show you the entire compilation process. That is, this is what Eclipse is doing in the background every time you type something. It's compiling and, and recompiling every single time so that it uh, can uh, display those, er those potential errors to you. Java C is the Java compiler. And I can go ahead and compile it straight up. Uh, but what that's going to do is that's going to produce a .class file in the wrong directory. And now you see that there's a Java file and a class file. We don't like that. We don't like our source files and our, our uh, compiled code in the same directory. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to remove that. And I'm going to recompile it using some flags to tell it to compile to a different location. And it's not going to change anything because it was already compiled. But if we look at there, uh, if we look at that directory, we see it's still there. So now, how do we actually run this? Well, we need to run it through the Java Virtual Machine, right? So Java. So Java is the Java Virtual Machine command. CP is just short for class path. Uh, I'm telling it where to find the compiled class files uh, in the bin folder. And then I give it a fully, what's called a fully qualified path name. In other words, I want to run the hello world program that's in the unl.csc package. Okay. And then it simply, and then it simply output to the standard output. Again, if you're using an IDE like Eclipse uh, or IntelliJ or NetBeans or whatever you want to use, uh, then it's going to be all opaque. You don't have to worry about any of that. You hit the play button and it works. I do want to draw your attention to a few things before we move on. Uh, for example, you see the C style syntax. Let me go ahead and increase the size here. Uh, you see the C style syntax. Oh, again, opening and closing curly brackets. Uh, square brackets denote arrays. We've got string literals that are denoted with double quotes. Uh, you have a main entry point uh, that begins uh, the uh, that usually begins any executable program. Uh, you also have C style comments, so you can have single line comments which are ignored by the program, or you can have you have multiple line comments. For example. That is a forward slash star, and then a st it ends with a star forward slash. Right? It automatically inserted these extra stars because it wants to format it nice and vertical. I'm going to go ahead and show you another way. I'm going to go ahead and show you another style of documentation. Good documentation tells the what and the why and omits the how. In other words, code should be self-documenting. In other words, anybody who, is com uh, anybody who is competent enough in the programming language and in the problem domain should be able to read your code and understand how it accomplishes what it's doing. The what is a human readable message to another user so that they can understand what is going on without having to go through line by line and figuring out how it does it and then therefore conclude what it does. The why is also documentation because it tells any future people, including yourself uh, or maintainers of your project, why you did things a certain way. If it's not, if it's potentially out of the ordinary uh, or something like that. So the way that we're going to do that in Java is using doc style comments or Java doc style comments. It began with Java. I'm going to go ahead and, and Eclipse makes this super easy because all you have to do is start it with a forward slash star star, hit enter, and it automatically generates formatted code for you. For example, it, uh, it uh, added the fact that I'm my, my system user neighbor name here, it inserted that as an author. Uh, this at sign, that's kind of like a meta tag. It's telling uh, the Java doc that uh, this is a special it's semantically marking it up to tell you that this is the author. There are several others that you can use, but I'm not going to go ahead and get into it too much here. Uh, but uh, I'll go ahead and document this Hello World program.
So the great thing about doc style comments are that you can automatically link to external resources or internally to other documentation. Uh, so for example, for more information on Java, see, I'm going to go ahead and put in a direct link here. And the way that what I'm going to link to here is simply just Oracle's tutorial on Java documentation. Right? You can see how this works because if you hover over what you've documented, uh, because I put this above the class declaration, it's documenting the class itself. And I can go in here and I can click on this and I can open up that web page uh, because it was an external link. You can also do internal links. For example, I can link to my main method. And when I hover over this, I can click on that and it takes me to the documentation. I haven't written any documentation yet. And so that's why it's blank. Let me go ahead and do that now. And you can see that it automatically marks up the parameters, which are called args. And now what does this documentation look like? The great thing about doc style comments are that if you keep them embedded in the code itself, you can run a tool like Eclipse is doing right here and automatically generate web pages to display all the documentation. As you learn Java and as you start to Google more uh, about oh, well, how do I do this in Java, how do I do that, usually the top hit is going to be the documentation from Oracle. And those are all Javadoc style comments, the web pages that have been generated by Javadocs, generated as web pages, so that you can check those out online instead of having to actually go to the source code. So on the next video, we're going to go ahead and start with variables and operators. Uh, but this is uh, hopefully enough to get you started to at least write your own Hello World program.